So here we are. Back together again, talking about old painful stuff. OK, now we have a couple of challenges here. Look at this. You clearly have a GCF that needs to be factored. That's always the first thing you try. So let us do this. First, you know that the number two is going to, you know, these are even numbers, so two is definitely going to go into each of these numbers, but we still might have some other numbers. So first, let's take care of the X's. You have seven X's here, so I'll write 48 and then, uh, no, I don't want to do that because there definitely won't be room. OK, well, there's a trick. When you have the same variable raised to different powers in every term, then the GCF of the variables is always the variable with the lowest power. Here we've got all X's. We've got X to the seventh, X to the sixth, and X to the fifth. That means X to the fifth is going to be our, our variable part of the GCF. So I'm going to pull that out first. Maybe. <coughs> so X to the fifth. That'll be 48x squared minus 124x plus 80. Now we're going to work on the numbers. Okay, and to do this, I'm going to use a trick you learned back in pre-algebra. You're, you're missing the 4 on the 124. Thank you so much. That would have been upsetting. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make a factor tree. I was thinking about is, uh, the people in our class who are very uncomfortable using the graphing calculator. And uh, if you're not uncomfortable, that's great. Uh, you can just say 48. Uh, you can go to Y equals 48 divided by X, second graph and that will give you the table of values and you can find what the factors of 48 are. But there was always a pretty good trick you could use. For instance, 48 is four times 12, among other things, 16 times three. Um, it doesn't matter what you use, or two times 24, three times 16. But uh, I decided to use 4 times 12, doesn't matter. And then I'll factor 4 into 2 times 2, and I'll factor 12 into 3 times 4, and then 4 over here will factor into 2 times 2. So I could say that 48 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times 3. These are like fruit at the end of the branches, just hanging down there. And so those are our fruit. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. As I endeavor to find the 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 GCF, which incidentally I believe is four, but let's do it the long way. 124. Well, that's going to be, let's see, four will go into that. Four goes into 12 three times and four goes into four one time. 31 is a prime, I believe, I think. So um, let's just say two times two. And so we'll say 124 equals two times two times 31. And then 80, well, we know four goes into that. 
but I could also break it down as 8 times 10. And then break down each of these. The 10 becomes 2 times 5. And the 8 becomes 4 times 2. And the 4 becomes 2 times 2. So now if we write them over here, I'll have 48 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and 124 equals 2 times 2 times 31, and 80 equals, wow, okay, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And as we study the factorization of each of these three numbers, you can't help but notice that each of these contain two twos, which is four. So these three numbers can be written this way. We'll have x to the fifth times four times 12 times x squared minus four times 31 times x plus four times 20. And so four is going to be the number part of our GCF. Let me circle these to keep them separate from what we're writing. Okay, so now I know that I can write this as 4x to the fifth, times 12x squared minus 31x plus 20. Now that is still pretty darn ugly. So of course, for this part, if we're going to try factoring, we're going to have to look for 12 times 20, which is 240. And factor 240 into two numbers that add up to negative 31. I suppose that's possible but would you really want to do it? Um, and so when I am faced with a quandary like this, I realize that only the quadratic formula is going to make this whole thing doable. Okay, so here we go. And I want to make sure that this is true. OK, I am going to factor. I'm not. I'm going to put it in the quadratic formula. And we're going to factor backwards as you're about to see. This is a secret trick that can make your life easier. So listen up. Um, we have 12 X squared minus 31 X plus 20, where A is 12, B is negative 31, and C is 20. Now I just plug these numbers into the formula. X equals negative B, and B is negative, plus or minus the square root of 
negative 31 in parentheses squared minus 4 times A times C. All over 2A. And as you can see, this is not going to be pretty any way you do it. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's clear. And now, what I want to do is, okay, I'm going to have to change my view to hide large display. It's doing it to me again. It's not getting smaller. Well, to heck with it. Negative 31 squared. In parentheses, really important you do that with negative numbers. Minus 4 times A, whoop, no. Times A times C. This is what's under the radical, under the square root radical. Negative 31 squared minus 4 times A times C. I'm going to find out what that number. Oh no, you're kidding me. It's one. Okay, fine. So X is going to equal negative negative 31, which is positive 31, plus or minus the square root of one over 24, which is going to be 31 plus or minus one over 24, which is going to be, okay, we're going to have X equals 31 minus one over 24, or we're going to have X equals 31 plus one over 24. So that will be thirty over twenty four, which is what? Two times fifteen over two times twelve. Nah, because fifteen breaks down into three times five. And twelve breaks down into three times four. So the twos cancel, the threes cancel, and I'm left with, with five over four. All right, now we come over here. 31 plus one is 32. So X is going to equal 32 over 21. This is truly horrible. Um, 32 is, is it 21 or 24? It's 24. Why am I doing that? You've rescued me again. This is four times eight. 32 is four times eight. Not, not. It's also 16 times two. Let's just break it down into four times four times two. Four times four times two over four times six, which is four times two times three. Now, the fours cancel, the twos cancel, 
leaving me with four thirds. So X equals four thirds. Okay, so let's look how you factor backwards. You start with these, x equals 5 fourths and x equals 4 thirds. Now, I need to get rid of my fractions. How do you get rid of a fraction? You multiply by the denominator, but it's an equation, so you have to go on both sides. So I'll multiply by four over here, and I'll multiply by four over here. Over on the right, the fours cancel, leaving me with four X equals five. Now you know how when you solve an equation by factoring, the first thing you do after you factor is you set each factor equal to zero. Well, we're working backwards here. So I have to set for X equals five equal to an equation that equals zero, into an equation that equals zero. So I will subtract five from both sides. That will give me four X minus five over here. And this will give me zero over here. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the right. Multiply by three on both sides of this equation. The threes cancel, leaving me with three X equals four. And then subtract four from both sides. So 3x minus 4 equals 0. Now this is a factor and this is a factor. So the complete factorization of this would be 4x to the fifth times 4x minus 5 times 3x minus 4. That was truly horrible. Truly, truly horrible. Um, however, now we're going to multiply it together and see if it works. This could be very dangerous. 4x to the fifth times. All right, 4x times 3x is 12x squared. 4x times negative 4 is minus 16x. Now negative five times three X is negative 15 X. And negative five times negative four is positive 20. I'm about to jump up and down and scream. Four X to the fifth times 12 X squared minus 31 X plus 20. So we could have done it. But this actually ends up being easier, I think. So 4x to the fifth times 12x squared is going to be 48x to the seventh. 4x to the fifth times negative 31x is going to be minus 120 four X to the sixth and four X to the fifth times plus 20 is going to be 80 X to the fifth. And that is precisely what we started out with. 
and I just feel like screaming for joy. The others are not that bad. But when they are really bad, it's actually easier to use the quadratic formula and then work backwards. So we're going to actually do that in every case as a way to help you remember working with the quadratic formula, sort of killing two birds, oh, sorry birds, with one stone. So let me write it up here. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And there's a song and I'm going to torture you with it this morning or whenever you watch the video. Here you go. One of the requirements to, of being a teacher is to not be afraid of making an absolute fool of yourself, which is what I'm about to do. <clears throat> X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. There it is. Sing bravo, that to yourself. Bravo. Oh, thank you. Sing that to yourself every night and you will never forget the quadratic formula. You've got to memorize it anyway. I'm sure you already have, but just in case it slipped away, you've got to rememorize it. Okay, here we go. There is no GCF here. Boo hoo. So I'm going to have to actually use, I'm going to use the AC method this time. A is 30. B is 17. And C is 2. In the AC method, you multiply A times C. That means here we're going to multiply 30 times 2. And we need to find two, two um, factors of 60, which is what 30 times 2 is. Two factors of 60 that add up to positive 17. So here we go. 60 equals 1 times 60. 2 times 30, 3 times 10, 4 times 15, yes, 5 times 12, there it is, and 6 times 10. And then they start repeating. So 5 times 12 is what I want. Because, how do I know that? 5 plus 12 equals 17, the middle number, B. So your strategy with the AC method, if you're sure you can't factor out a GCF, is to multiply the first number times the last number, and then factor the number you get into two numbers until you find, you know, two numbers each, factor pairs, until you find two of the numbers that add up to B, the middle number. And then here's what you do. 30X squared stays the same, and plus two stays the same, so let me let me kind of circle this. Seventeen has to split apart into two terms, which is what all of this 
is 4. 17 is going to split apart into 5x plus 12x. Now I still have 30x squared plus 17x plus 2. So I have not changed anything. I haven't changed the numeric value of this quadratic trinomial. I've only changed the form. Now I am going to put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, and I'm going to leave that plus in the middle. It's very important that you leave the plus in the middle. Now, I try to ignore the second set of parentheses and just using the first set of parentheses, I pull out a greatest common factor. 30 is five times six times X times X. plus 5x is 5 times x, but let's also say 5 times x times 1, which is true. Both of these terms contain 5x. I'm going to write down 5x as my greatest common factor of the first set of parentheses. Then I make open parentheses and I write down the leftovers. So before I do that, I'm going to mark out the five in both terms because I used it. And I'm going to mark out one of the X's in both terms because I used it. And now I'll write the leftovers. In the first term there, I have a six X. And then I have a plus sign. And then I have a 1, which is why I made sure to put the 1 there. Now I copy down the plus sign. Do not lose your plus sign or all is lost. And then I look at these two terms in the second set of parentheses and I discover, I mean, it's easy to see that 2 goes into both of these terms. This is 2 times 6 times x plus two times one. So two is my GCF, I write it down, then I write open parentheses, mark out my twos so I don't use them again, and then write six X plus one, which I have a six X here and a one here and a plus sign left over. Now, I have two parts of this expression separated by the plus sign. I have this part on the left of the plus sign and this part on the right of the plus sign. Both sides of the expression contain a 6x plus 1 in parentheses. That now is my greatest common factor. I pull it out to the front. And then I put open parentheses and write the leftovers. 5x plus 1. And those are my factors of 30x squared plus 17x plus two. And this, this one, unlike the other one, was not really very hard. In fact, if I were to actually do it, I might find out that I could have just factored this very easily and it wouldn't have been as hard as it looked. I am, and I always do check, to make sure I'm right, because I know I love to make little mistakes. So let's do this. I'm going to take 6x and multiply it by 5x, 6x and multiply it by 1. That will give me 
30 X squared. And then six X plus one. Six X times plus one is six X plus two. I'm sorry. On your second set of parentheses, is that supposed to be 5x plus 2? Yes, it is. Thank you. OK, so that won't be 6x. That'll be 12x. And you've saved the day again. Now, I have 1 times 5x and 1 times 2. That will be plus 5x plus two, which will give me 30 X squared plus 17 X plus two, which is what I started with, with a little help from my friends. Okay, now it's important that you learn how to factor backwards when you're using the quadratic formula. The main use of a quadratic formula is to solve a quadratic equation. OK, but we're cheating a little bit and going beyond that. Here we go. X equals negative 17. Plus or minus the square root of 17 squared and 17 is positive. The negative sign belongs there, but I don't usually bother to put a, a, a positive number in parentheses here, but you can. In fact, you'd be safer if you always put the B number in parentheses. Minus 4 times A, I'll do it with all of them, times C, all over 2. Ugh, times 30. So that's going to be X equals negative 17 plus or minus the square root of. OK, well, it's not going to have to be long. Because I'm going to find what the one number is that goes under there. By using the calculator. So 17 squared minus 4 times 30 times 2. OK. So what is it, negative? No. 17 squared minus 4 times 30 times 2. Is that correct? 17 squared minus 4 times 30 times 2, yes. OK. Um, I'll, hit, I'll hit enter. It's 49, which is a perfect square. That's what it should be for these particular problems because you can't factor if this is not a perfect square or zero. Over 60, arg. All right, negative 17 plus or minus 7 over 60. Notice that when I take the square root of 49, I don't have a radical anymore. Pretty cool. OK, X equals negative 17 minus 7 over 60, which will be negative 24 over 60. And that'll be negative 2. Will it be negative two? Yeah, well, I'll do it that way and see if it works. 12 over 
um, 5 times 12. The 12s cancel, leaving me with negative 2 fifths. OK, and then we have another one. X equals negative 17. That was minus 7, so plus 7 over 60 equals 10. No, it doesn't. It equals negative 10 over 60, which is negative 1 sixth. So now, here we go. Please move. X equals negative 2 fifths x equals negative one sixth. Over here, I multiply both sides by five. Over here, I multiply both sides by six. The denominator. Okay, boom, boom. 5x equals negative 2, 6x, boom, boom, equals negative 1. Now I use the zero principle to make sure I've got a zero on the right-hand side. Um, plus 2, plus 2. That'll give me 5x plus 2 equals zero. And over here, plus one, plus one, six X plus one equals zero, which means the factorization of 30 X squared plus 17 X plus two. In fact, I should write it 30 x squared plus 17x plus 2 equals 5x plus 2 times 6x plus 1, which ought to be the same thing I got over here, and it is. Yay! 6x plus 1 times 5x plus 2. If the AC method is too difficult for you, and it is a very difficult method, you can always switch to the quadratic formula, get your two solutions, answers, and then work backwards until you get the, uh, the, the two factors. And so finally, let's see what time it is. We've got time. Okay, I know this is fabulously interesting for you. So thank you for holding on. 10C squared minus 34C minus 24. Okay, for sure two is a GCF. I think that may be the only one but let's, let's try. This is going to be two times five times C times C minus um, 17 times two times C minus 12 times two. Right, that's three times four, but you don't have that here or here. So two is it. Two is the most we can pull out. 
So I'll rewrite this as two parentheses. 5C squared minus 17C minus 12. Okay, so now my A, is that right? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. My A is five. My B is negative 17. Whoever wrote these problems really seems to like 17 a lot. And C equals negative 12. I'm going to multiply A times C. I'll get five times negative 12. And that will give me negative 60. Now I need to factor negative 60 into two numbers that add up to negative 17. Negative 60 equals, okay. Now, I'm gonna write, cheat a minute. We've already done this with 60. 60 equals one times 60, two times 30, three times 10, four times 15, five times 12, and three times 10, two times 30, three times 20, four times 15, five times 12, and six times 10. Okay, um, and then it starts to repeat. This is negative 60, not positive 60. But I can use this as kind of a cheat sheet. And I can write this, negative one times 60, or one times negative 60, negative two times 30, or two times negative 30, Negative three times 20, that's gonna be it. Or uh, three times negative 20. And you get the idea because this is a negative number, the way you get a negative number is by multiplying a negative number times a positive number or a positive number times a negative number. And we could go on if we wanted to take the time, but we've already found our answer. Um, 3 plus negative 20 equals negative 17, which is the B number. Okay, so I, I start out here. I've got two times, I'm going to put it out here, two times 5C squared minus 17C minus 12, parentheses closed, roll this up a little bit. So this will be two times 5C squared. And at this point, I can ask myself, hmm, no, nah, I'm not going to cheat. Well, that's not cheating, but I'm going to do it, play it straight plus 3C minus 20C minus 12, because you have to see this. So, okay. Now, I'm going to put brackets temporarily because I'll, otherwise I'll have parentheses and parentheses, which is not the worst thing. Parentheses 5C squared plus 3C. Now, we're going to put plus 
and parentheses negative 20 C minus 12. Parentheses closed, brackets closed. The brackets on the outside just help to keep this a little more clear. Okay, the only GCF we're going to have here is C on the first set of parentheses. And that will leave me 5C plus 3. And then write down my plus sign. Now we have to go to an uh, go through an old rule that you may or may not have learned. I hope you learned it. And that is first, this guy is a polynomial. Okay, so let's write it separately somewhere. Out here, negative 20C minus 12. This is the highest degree term right here. The coefficient, the number in front of the highest degree term, is negative. What that means is we have to have a negative GCF, not a positive GCF. So we're going to have to do something that's a little bit different here. Negative 20 is going to factor into negative 4 times 5 times C. And negative 12 will factor, I better put a plus sign here, will factor into negative 4 times positive 3, like that. Now I'm having to go to this extra trouble all because um, I have a negative coefficient of a highest degree term. So the GCF has to be negative. The GCF now is negative four. So I'll write negative four parentheses, five C. I can even mark out the negative fours now. Five C plus three. And so I come over here and yes, I've got negative four times five C plus three. Well, okay, now the hard part's over. I have two bracket. I have two different sides of the plus sign. I have a 5C plus 3 in parentheses on both sides of the plus sign. So 5C plus 3 is my GCF. Now I can mark it out if I want to. And I'll be left with 2 plus Never mind that. Forget the two. We haven't used the two yet. I will be left with C. Well, that's great. I will be left with C plus negative four, which is C minus four. And now that everything is multiplied, I can write my factors together to times 5C plus 3 times C minus 4. And now you need to check. You don't need to write your check. You can do it in your head, but I'm doing it. All right, I take the 5C and multiply it by C, multiply by negative 4. That will be 5C squared. 5C times minus 4 is minus 20C. Plus 3C. Uh, 3 multiplies the C, 
3 multiplies the minus 4, so I'll have 3c minus 12. And that will give me 2 times 5c squared minus 17c minus 12. Then I multiply in the 2. That's 10 C squared minus 34 C minus 24, which I think is what we started with. I certainly hope it is. Yes, yes, we had to turn this around. T 10 C squared minus 34 C minus 24. Which means the whole purpose to doing that is to make sure that my factorization is absolutely correct, or right here, is absolutely correct. Right there. And again, you can always do this with the quadratic formula, and you may have already gotten the idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. What some of you might not have realized is that. Well, wait a minute, let me write this. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Is that even though you've got X well, no, you don't have X. You just have an expression. You have 10 C squared minus 34 C minus 24. You still have to factor out any GCFs before you use the quadratic formula, which I think is a total drag, but we're gonna do it anyway. Two times five C squared minus 17 C minus 12, and now A is 5, B is negative 17, and C is negative 12, and I'm going to substitute in the quadratic formula, negative B plus or minus the square root of B is negative, so it definitely goes in parentheses. Negative 17 squared minus four times A times C. All over 2A, well, 2A, A is 10, A is five. All right, so negative 17 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 12. That's clear. Parentheses, negative 17 parentheses close squared minus 4 times 5 parentheses negative 12. Enter, 529. I am not familiar with that as a perfect square. Let's take the square root. Second x squared gives us the square root. 529 is 23, okay. So I'll pretend I always knew it. X equals 17, negative, negative is positive, plus or minus the square root of 529 over 10, which is going to be 17 plus or minus 23 over 10. So we'll have X equals 17 
minus 23 over 10 and x equals 17 plus 23 over 10. So 17 minus 23 is negative 16, negative six, yes. negative six over 10, which is negative three over five. And 17 plus 23 is 40 over 10, which is four. So now one more time, maybe the last time today, x equals negative three fifths and x equals four. You realize there's not a whole lot more I need to do to that, but this needs to get multiplied by five on each side. Fives cancel over here. I'll be left with five x equals negative three. Meanwhile, let's subtract the four. We'll have X minus four equals zero. And over here, I'm going to add three to both sides. I'll have five X plus three equals zero which means the factors I got are 5x plus 3 and x minus 4, the same that I had over here and here. And then of course my final answer doing that would be that hopefully I did not lose my two, I didn't forget it was there. So, the answer is two times five X plus three times X minus four. And that way it's completely factored, which is the idea. And you have your choice. The instructions may say use the AC method, <clears throat> But if you prefer the quadratic formula method, that is fine with me. Discussion about these three. Okay, I will completely and fully admit that I don't like the AC method at all. But now we move on to something considerably easier, the difference of two squares, factoring by the difference of two squares. I need a drink before I start this. Okay, this is so fast, I think you'll be out early anyway. It is just so easy, let me show you the formula. A squared minus B squared equals A plus B times A minus B. And that's all there is to it. So we start over here. This isn't squared, but both terms have one R at least. So I have to factor out an R. Okay, 25 and 36 are both perfect squares. Now, this is the form of the difference of two squares. Difference means subtract. So let me make it longer. And you've got a square here. So 
if you don't know your perfect squares, if you're not familiar with your perfect squares, you can do this with your calculator. Second X squared, 25, enter. Okay, that's a perfect square. And second X squared, 36, enter. That's a perfect square. So now we know, now you know, that what we have here is R, times 5r squared minus 6 squared. Well, now 5r is acting like a, and 6 is acting like b. So we'll have r, actually I'm going to come over here and do it we'll have R bracket, boom, 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 5R, 5R, 6, 6, plus, minus, and now that everything is multiplied because 5r plus 6 is being held together as one thing by the parentheses, 5r minus 6 is being held together as one thing by the parentheses, our answer is r times 5r plus 6 times 5r minus 6. And that is all there is to it most of the time. <clears throat> okay, now. Each term has a six, I have to pull that out. And I'll be left with a squared minus t squared. Now, obviously, this is a perfect square because it's something squared. And this is a perfect squared because it's something squared. So I don't even have to spend any time breaking apart or writing things as perfect squares. It very obviously gives me this. The A breaks apart into A and A. <clears throat> the t squared breaks apart into t and t, and I put a plus here and a minus here. And you will find that your life is easier if you put the plus first for what we do later. Okay. Now we come over here. Almost everybody knows that 9 is a perfect square because it's 3 squared. So I'm going to assume you know that anyway. This is a weird looking animal right there. It's V squared times D squared. But what that is, is it's just VD squared. So I have a perfect square minus a perfect square. So I'll have VD and VD and three and three and plus and minus and we're done. Yep. We are finished with our review of factoring. We're going to be um, right. My math lab isn't where it used to be. <laughs> OK, oh well, 
we're about to start factoring a lot. And so we had to have this little review before we embark on rational functions, which require tons of factoring. And there's no way around it, as you'll see. So this has been our trial for today. Any discussion about this? It might be that you learned how to use the uh, um, uh, quadratic formula to work backwards and get factoring from that. That might be relatively new for you, or it might not at all. Certainly the quadratic formula is not new to you. So now start uh, memorizing it in earnest. Anything you want to talk about before we go? If not, I wish you a very happy weekend since we don't meet again until next Monday. It'll be October. Brr. Scary month. Okay, bye-bye. You too.